Hello, this is Palico Padge, and welcome back to another episode of Padge Plays Preview Edition with the game The Darkest Files by Paint Bucket Games. This is a active demo which is available through the Steam Next Fest currently, but will be available on their Steam storefront from here on in. And um, it's a bit of an unusual one. Now, as you are aware, if you're a long term viewer, I like to play games which are driven by story, be that the fantastical or the historical. And this very much is in the historical side of things. Now, I will read you what it says on the Steam page. I've also had a little bit of interaction with one of the uh, makers of the game. So I'll just go into a little bit deeper into what they've told me about the, the, the background to this. Uh, and then we shall delve in. So... The Darkest Files is a historical investigation and courtroom game based on the true crimes of the Nazi era. Investigate cold cases, search for clues, interrogate witnesses, immerse yourself in the crimes and defend your case in court to bring the perpetrators to justice. Now, that's pretty heavy. Uh, obviously, you know, it, it, I don't need to go into uh, you know what the Nazis did. Uh, obviously, it's it's uh, it is a, a dark mark on uh, German history, and it's something which is not usually investigated too deeply into when it comes to games, other than stuff like Wolfenstein, where you you just go and and kill lots of Nazis. Uh, so this picked my interest. Um, so I thought, you know, story driven. That ticks one of the boxes for this channel. We'll, we'll have a little bit of a deeper delve into it. Uh, so it does say World War II has ended, yet Nazis can still be found in high-ranking positions all across Germany. Hess's Attorney General, Fritz Bauer, establishes a special unit of young, unencumbered public prosecutors to pursue and investigate Nazi crimes and to prosecute the perpetrators. So I, I sort of reached out to the developer, actually they reached to me, uh, and just asked them the question, why take on such a uh, heavy subject matter for for what is inevitably a, a light escape via a, a computer game? And uh, uh, they, they just said very plainly, The Darkest Files is inspired by the true story of Fritz Bauer, a Jewish judge who lost his job when the Nazis took over and was sent to a camp but fled the country. After the war, he returned to Germany and became general prosecutor of Hessia. He chased down Nazi criminals and brought them to justice. Not to take revenge, but because he truly believed that the only way for Germany, which he still loved and felt as a part of, is to how to deal with the former criminal regime and its acts, was to apply rule of law where possible. Uh, so Bauer plays our boss in the game, and although our character is fictional, the crimes are based on true crimes. Uh, so it's more about uh, what the, um, the the protagonist, Hannah Arendt, used to call the banality of evil. Uh, we're not going down the road to death camps or similar, but describe small acts of bane or evil. So very interesting. So we're sort of encroaching on the subject matter without going to the darkest, darkest files, <laughs> if you will. Uh, so let's crack on, see what it's all about. We're going to give it about half an hour's time. Um, if we find that we're, we're we're intrigued and we want to continue throughout the demo and there's indeed more time to the demo then we might pick it up in another episode but let's jump in see what it's all about so we are going to be starting the new game the events in the game are based on true crimes committed during the nazi era and investigated in the young federal republic of germany with the exception of fritz bauer the names of all those involved have been changed any similarities with existing persons of the same name are purely coincidental frankfurt west germany 1956 11 years after the end of world war ii many crimes of the nazi era still go unpunished the perpetrators of these crimes are walking free. Many judges, prosecutors and police officers have already served under the Nazis. Now they have no interest in prosecuting their former comrades for actions similar to their own. But the victims of these crimes, this is unbearable. To end this, Attorney General Fritz Bauer establishes a special unit of young prosecutors with no ties to the old regime. I am Esther Katz. I am one of these prosecutors. We are investigating Nazi crimes and bringing perpetrators to justice. Not to avenge, not to heal, but to show that there are laws that apply to all. It doesn't make us popular. Most want to forget. Some want us to shut up. 
but they cannot stop us. Nothing belongs to the past. Everything is still present and can become the future again. Should have just jumped into the game, really. It was all explained there. <laughs> Hey-ho, let's crack on. A new job, 3rd of September, 1956. Oh, oh. There we go, first person. Welcome to The Darkest Files. This tutorial will help you get familiar with the controls and mechanics of the game, and it's too quick. You can move with right-click. Try going upstairs. Oh, yes. Can we do Wasad? We can do Wasad, too. We'll do Wasad. We're old school. Let's go and have a look. Ooh. Archive. Hello? Anybody here? Not much of a welcome party. You can interact with highlighted objects by pressing left. Nobody seems to be here. Try opening the door to your office. That's the big man. That's not me. That, that, that'd be that. <sighs> now, where have I... When being inside a dialogue, it can happen that, that you choose between different answers. Select the choice by middle and confirm it. Oh, yes. Is this my new office? Oh, hello. Good morning. Sorry I didn't hear you enter. <laughs> you must be Miss Cuts, right? Yes. Esther Cuts, yes. That would be me. And you are? Paula. Paula Fisher. Hello. I'm a legal assistant here for Mr. Bauer's team. Well, the legal assistant. We're a bit understaffed at the moment. Uh, let's keep it pleasant. I mean, she was snooping about in my desk, but I don't suppose there's anything too interesting in my desk right now. It's nice to meet you, Paula. Oh, it's my pleasure, believe me. I've brought you this week's newspaper and a letter that arrived for you. Anyway, I should probably be going. I'll be at my desk if you need anything. You'll find me. Or through the intercom. We just had the whole system installed. It made my life so much easier. Uh, anything else? Thank you. Is there anything else? Mr. Bauer wants to talk with you. Once you've acclimatized. His words, not mine. He should be arriving soon for that matter. So should the rest of the team. I see. Very well then. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you on our team, Miss Katz. All right then. First encounter, check. Time for me to settle in. Well, let's have a mooch about. I mean, there's probably not a lot for me to do. Can I water anything? Water the plants? No. Do I have any plants? I got plants. They're probably plastic. I am liking the visuals. It's definitely got that noir -y feel to it. And of course it's raining. Right, so let's, uh, let's see what's in the box. The last holiday we spent together as a family. I'm so glad Dad made us do it. Franz was such a show off that summer. Always trying to impress the girls. I wish you were here, big brother. Look at that. Written evidence of all those sleepless nights and the ton of coffee. But here I am. I finally made it. Pretty sure it was all worth it. I'm sure we'll find out. A new job deserves a fresh journal, ready to be filled with notes and tasks. Can't open it yet. Have access to all your important tools, you can use the radial menu. The notebook contains current to dos, overviews of characters, and more. Access it via the radial menu. All right, you ring in, I can hear. The intercom allows you to communicate with Paula. You can use the phone to contact various people or get called. Um, uh, hello? Mr. Bauer is ready for you. He says, at your own time. With him, that means as soon as possible. Thank you. I'd better get going then. Good luck. Okay, off to see the boss man. I mean, what was she looking at down here? Nothing which I'm savvy to right now. 
today's news. Catholic Day leave. Catholic soldiers to receive up to three days of special leave to attend the German Catholic Day. Tension with Moscow. Well, it's still apparent now as well. Defending Europe. The lottery 6 out of 49 belongs to the past. The main prize will now require the correct choice of seven numbers, decreasing the chance of picking the winning sequence but increasing the prize itself. The very first lucky number seven, a 24, resulted in the highest lottery win in German history. That's quite a few Deutschmarks. Army up. The German army will be supplied with American equipment for the years 1957 to 1960. The preparations for this deal was completed by US Secretary of State John Foster Dulles and West German Ambassador Washington Krikela in the Kuril dispute. Japan continues its peace treaty negotiations with the Soviet Union, trying to avoid what Prime Minister Hato Jama's government has been calling the Adenauer formula. The current draft holds significant similarities to the deal signed by Germany last autumn, especially in its demand for Japan to recognise Soviet claims of the occupied territories of Sakhalin and the Kuril Islands. Oh, some things don't change. Right, what's this? My dear daughter, my heartfelt... Wow, that's really terrible handwriting. Congratulations on your promotion. Being a state attorney at the age of 30, that is not a small feat. You achieved this on your own through diligence and brilliance of mind. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Though it is a great honour to work for the Attorney General directly, Dr. Barrett is not always easy to work with I hear but people are saying a lot of good things about him too so please don't let me spook you I wish you all the best of your new position my father has ever been never ever been prouder of his daughter with love your father York is that uh, PS your mother asks if you're coming home at the weekend I think she's still getting used to the fact that her daughter is working a job not tending a family that could be oh that's a, that's a difficult word we'll leave it we know what they're going on about we're career we're career driven oh yes oh yes let's go meet the boss man so hello miss cuts how can i help you mm, we know where the office is oh humor me paula where can i find mr bower's office it's the door on your left, at the end of the room. Okie dokie, Skip. Miss Cuts, welcome to the front line. Good morning, Dr. Bauer. Just missed her. We're working together. My name, as you already know, is Fritz Bauer. General Prosecutor. Much to the displeasure of the public, I insist on investigating the many crimes committed under the NSDAP. Most of them, of course, have long since gone cold. And nobody out there truly wishes for us, for you, to solve them. Or frankly, to even touch them. A rather thankless job, may I say. Are you up for it? Yeah, that's why I'm here. I'm well aware of this. You see, I'm not entirely sure of that. But no matter. Miss Cuts, I believe I have the perfect case for you to start with. I'm listening. Hans Naumann. An older gentleman. Shot just before the end of the war. Uh, what do we know? What do we know about the case? According to the victim's wife, her husband was taken by uniformed man for no reason. He never came back. His body was found in a forest nearby after the war. Shot in the head. Okay. I assume this isn't the first time she brought this case up? No, it's not. Miss Naumann reported her husband's death to the police. A case was open. The public prosecutor's office investigated members of the NSDAP local group. They're suspects. However, no charges were pressed. 
Based on the investigation, Hans Naumann was lawfully executed. Mm, yeah, on what, on what basis? And how did they reach this conclusion? That you can learn from the documents. The first thing that I'll need you to establish is why Hans Naumann was taken. Depending on the answer, we'll see if the case warrants a full investigation. I asked Mrs. Fisher to prepare a file. It should probably already be on your desk. I suggest you familiarize yourself with it and invite the widow to give a statement. Mrs. Fisher should be able to help you with that. Right. Look at the files, invite the first witness. I'll need a refresher on the Nazi hierarchy. Understanding the chain of command will be crucial. Paula did say to ask her if I needed anything. All right, let's go have a chat with Paula. Miss Katz, how can I help you? Let's request the documents first. I need some additional files. Something specific? I need more details regarding NS organizations. Chains of commands, ranks and badges. Anything you can get your hands on. Of course, I'll get right to it. Anything else? You might as well invite the lady. I need you to invite a potential witness. Of course. Who should I reach out to? Ludmilla Naumann, the victim's widow. I want to hear her version of what happened. Of course. I'm on top of it. Anything else? Thank you, Paula. That will be all for now. Here if you need anything. Oh, by the way, did you talk to your colleagues already? They should still be in their offices. Better go and say hello, I suppose. Who's this? Christoph Volmuth. Prosecutor. Oh, hello. Oh, please, forgive the mess. I'm afraid I didn't have the time to clean up. Miss Katz, right? Yeah. Esther Katz, nice to meet you. Pleasure is all mine. Christoph Volmuth. Christoph, preferably. I try to be on first name basis. Uh, let's keep it let's keep it light and airy and how's that going it worked with Paula not with Simon didn't dare to try it with Bauer in this case I would prefer you treat me like your male colleagues we are a small team I'd love to tell you that we are small and tight-knit but well happy to have more people join the fight especially someone like you uh, yeah Someone like me? And um, what do you mean by that? Well, you're a woman. Hmm. Do I remember this is the 40s? Yes. Okay. Right. Sorry. W what I meant to say is, you're a woman and the prosecutor. Uh, that didn't sound better. Just a bit. Maybe just a little bit. Right. Well... Hi, time. That's it, in short. Right. Again, it's a pleasure to meet you. Likewise. I'm looking forward to working alongside with you. Oh, he's a smooth operator. All right, okay. Uh, who else we got? Let's see who's over here. We have... That's a conference room. No one being there. Simon Peters. Simon, maybe? What are you doing here, Cuts? Getting reacquainted with my new co-worker. I had hoped so, at least. You know perfectly well what I mean. Uh, don't. No, it seems I really don't. Why are you here, Katz? Not in the room. Here, working for Mr. Bauer. What do you mean? And what do you mean by that? I'd have expected you to take a cushy position at your father's. Or at some other prestigious office, at his recommendation. Are you sure it's me you're talking about? I suppose since you're here, you won't be going anywhere for some time. Not anywhere, up at least. And there's enough trouble here without all this. He's a bit of an ass, isn't he? Um... 
What do you suggest? I still have no clue why he's got an attitude towards me. I assume you've come up with a suggestion? Let's just call it a truce. Very well. As long as you keep to it. Cuts. Welcome to our little hell. Pit us. Well, we found the dick of the company. The Rise of Frankenstein. Hey ho, I suppose we're going to do some work. Uh, so, let's go and see if we've got any files on our desk. Take you from there. We have a file on the desk. A case file. Select the category on the left side of the screen. Right, so, um, Manfred Wagner. Dear Mr. Bastian, the investigation to the death of Hans Norman from Munich has revealed that he fell victim to a violent crime. For details, please see the attached file report. We are able to identify four possible suspects who were connected with the victim's disappearance. Uh, we've got Alfred Faltman, Her Hermann Kibitz, Karl Schickert, Herbert Schwartz. I'm bound to, as soon as we're talking about murder, I'm going to be murdering German names. Uh, so I'm just going to say that right now so we know where we all stand, all right? <laughs> the police investigation is thus considered closed and we hereby officially turn the case over to your prosecutor's office. If you encounter any questions during the examination for indictment, please do not hesitate to contact us at any time. So, on May 10th, 1945, a dead body was reported to the police in a wooded area near Munich. The deceased was identified as Han Naumann, age 77. The autopsy revealed that he was killed by a gunshot to the forehead at close range. No injuries were found. The victims were filed a criminal complaint against unknown persons on August the 8th, 1945. She had observed two men pick up her husband on April the 28th, 1945. Okay. They have been considered missing ever since. The four suspects identified in connection with the victim's disappearance were interrogated. All suspects testified that the victim was guilty of treason and was therefore lawfully executed. The evaluation of whether a crime has been committed is the responsibility of the authorised prosecutor's team. Oh, that be us then. All right. So, Block Warden. Block Warden Mitamosa saw a man climbing up the block's flagpole, attempting to tear down the Reich flag and replace it with a white flag. Mitamosa ordered the perpetrator to stop and attempted to apprehend him. The perpetrator attacked him and fled the scene. The block warden was injured in result. Mitamosa is certain that he recognised a young resident of the block, Ian Noman, in the perpetrator. So local group leader Faltman's immediately set up a detachment to arrest and interrogate the suspect, Nauman. Right, so a young person... Alfred Feltman is the group leader. Okay. So, preliminary proceedings against all four of them due to manslaughter. Dear Mrs. Nauman, uh, in the above mentioned proceedings, we made the following decision. The proceedings shall be discontinued pursuant to 170 section 2 of the Code of Criminal Procedure. Reasons, the victim, Hans Nauman, was a communist insurgent who carried out highly treasonable actions in a wartime situation. The execution of the victim, Hans Nauman, was carried out according to the law in force at the time of the crime. The proceedings against A. Faltman, H. Kibitz, K. Schickert and H. Schwartz were discontinued on the basis of the laws as stated below. An act may be punished only if it was punishable by law before the act was committed. Um, so, criminal code of the German Reich. Anyone at home or as a German abroad who abets the hostile power during a war against the Reich or causes a disadvantage of the military power of the Reich or its allies will be sentenced to death or life imprisonment. In view of these two laws, it is not possible to carry out further investigations into this case as the suspects act accordingly to the contemporary laws in their execution of victim. All right, so he's apparently a communist. Let him have a word with the wife. There's nothing left for me to do. I should call it a day. Right, so we're going downstairs through the doors. Good night.
the widow. 17th of September 1956. Here we are. Miss Cuts, good morning. If you'd have a moment, I got you the files you requested. All right. Good morning, Paula. An overview of the Wehrmacht, police, and NSDAP, just as ordered. Great. I'll get started on them right away. Mrs. Naumann should be joining us later today. Not a morning person, apparently. Thank you, Paula. Oh, one more thing. They finally connected your phone. It's working all right. You even missed a call. I wrote down the number for you. Cool. Thanks, Paula. Why were you in my desk? I'll let you go for now. Right, so let's go and see what's going on. I should call the number Paula gave me. Do I just have it? I guess I just have it. We'll look at that after. So I take it to today's newspaper, check on my colleagues, call back the number Paula noted. All right, uh, let's read the paper. So, ooh, the IBM 650 is here. It's finally available. The magnetic drum data processing machine, the first computer in human history to be mass produced, is designed for users of table machines who evaluate the punch cards and for scientific users. And Glob's unsettled past. Hans Glob, Glob, uh, Adenauer's chief of staff and right-hand man, has come under fire as the issue of his involvement in the Nuremberg race laws was raised last week, citing his lack of objection to the laws, racial discrimination, outraged SPD and FDP members call for Globe's immediate resignation. Chancellor Adenauer refuses to address the issue. And Elvis Presley, please hold me tender. The voice, the moves. Teenage girls go wild and scream. Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll, took our breath away at the Ed Sullivan Show. Performing with stunning hip shakes and his charming charisma, he gave the world a night not to be forgotten. Nice. Okay, cool. Oh, I'm not worried about my associates, so let's phone Who do a I number. Call? Who do I want to call? Uh, yeah, that number. Hello. Esther Katz speaking. I was called from this number. Oh, Esther, my dear. So good to hear you. Dad? Where are you? What's this number? I'm at home. We got a new number. It's unlisted. Your mother hopes this way we'll receive fewer client calls. I hope I'm not disturbing you, dear. No. I'm busy, but I can always make room to talk to you. Oh, no, it's all right then. You should return to your work. If you ever feel like talking, you can always reach out to me, dear. My hard-working daughter, I'm proud of you. Thanks, Dad. Paula? Mrs. Nauman just arrived. I showed her to the conference room. Thank you. I'll be right there. Right. I mean, I should probably look at the case file before going in. So, Reich Leadership, Reich Slater, Gow Administration, District Office, Local Group. Okay. Following Hitler's appointment as Chancellor and NSDAP's victory in the 1933 elections, the party structure began to intertwine with the subsume that of the state apparatus. While state and regional governments were not outright dissolved, their significance and authority were heavily diminished in favour of the GAL, regional associations of the NSDAP. At the head of a GAL stood a GAL Leiter, appointed directly by Hitler, responsible for coordinating all party-related activities in the region and for ensuring NSDAP's authority and influence. To facilitate those goals, the GAL authority often overlapped and overruled that of local officials. This authority extended to the party members that were part of its office, or its subdivisions, districts, local groups, cells and blocks. The Heer, German Army. With the German rearmament and establishment of the Wehrmacht in 1935 as per the restoration Restoration of Military Sovereignty Proclamation, the armed forces of the Weimar Republic, the Reich Wehr, uh, were named and reformed into the Heer or the German Army. It was secretly expanded in the preceding years, nearly tripling in size, from seven infantry divisions to 21. As this breached the limitations imposed on Germany by the Treaty of Versailles, current names were used for the new divisions. 
The here was further expanded following the announcement of Hitler's plans for rearmament with the introduction of universal conscription and the recalling of the officers who served in World War I. They would swear fealty pers personally to the Führer. By September 1939, the size of the Heer reached a total of 75 divisions with 2.7 mil million military personnel. Over the course of the war, an estimated 13.6 million soldiers served in the army, both conscripts and volunteers. All right. And then the Schutzpolizei. Um, the State Protection Police, Schupo, or Schutzpolizei, was the uniformed police in the majority of German cities and major towns. As a division of the Order Police, its members were easily recognisable for the green uniform and colloquially referred to with this colour. Officers of the State Police were divided into branches, such as patrol, traffic or barrack police, depending on the department's location. They could also include water or aviation units. Until 1943, State Departments could also include a criminal investigation division. Before the beginning of the war, potential police trainees were subject to a number of requirements. These included the candidates having completed their military service, having proven Aryan heritage and being a member of the NSDAP. During the war, the Barrett Police, a branch of the Schuppo, formed the core of the police battalions which were deployed in occupied territories. Mm. Alright, let's go and have a chat. You must be Mrs. Naumann. Thank you for coming. My name is Esther Katz. I am one of the prosecutors in Attorney General Bauer's team. Good morning, Miss Katz. I am very grateful that you found the time. The last prosecutor who looked into my husband's death didn't even speak to me. He dismissed the case, claiming my husband was rightfully executed as a traitor. Um... Okay, what did I think that? Did your husband do anything for which he could be accused of treason? Of course not. The men that took him weren't even looking for him. I see. I know it's not easy, but please take me through the day your husband was taken. It was in April 45, only days before the Americans came. Where were you that day? Home. We lived in a small house. Hans was upstairs when the doorbell rang, before someone hammered against the door. By focusing on certain objects of interest with Esther, will form a question. When you opened the door, who was it? There were two men. One of them was pointing a gun at me. Do you remember what they looked like? Both wore uniforms. Brown ones, if I'm not mistaken. Did they belong to the Wehrmacht? No. Not Wehrmacht and not police either. Maybe some kind of party officials or something. One of them was small, thin. He wore glasses, I remember that. The second man was bigger. He was the one pointing the gun at me. He seemed to be in charge. Be careful when listening to a witness. It could be that you get the chance to interrupt them by pressing right button in time. What made you think that? He had two golden stripes on his uniform and he was bossing the small one around. He yelled and waved his gun around to scare me. They demanded to speak to Mr. Naumann. The gun was still there and... I was just so afraid I couldn't even move. Hans came down and asked them what they wanted. They demanded to know if there was anyone with us. When we said no, the smaller guy looked in the other rooms. He found no one. It was only Hans and I. Then the big one told Hans that he had to come with them for questioning. What did he do? And your husband? How did he react? 
Hans remained polite the whole time. He asked them why it was necessary, but the man ignored him. Then everything happened so fast. The small one said they'd let him go if our son would turn himself in. Then they just herded him out, like an animal. Right, so the kid who pulled down the Nazi flag would appear to be their son. Did you and your husband live alone? No. There was also our son, Jan. He insisted on staying with us to help around the house. At least until the end of the war. But he wasn't in. He went out in the morning before we woke up. Did you see something outside? It has been a while, I'm not exactly sure. There was a car, I think. Yes, yes, one of those big, terrible trucks that they used. I remember them. They were just everywhere. Can't go upstairs. Do you remember what time of the day it was? We just had lunch, so it must have been close to 1 p.m. This was the last time I saw him alive. I mean, my son never got the chance to say goodbye. Right. This is where I'm going to pause this episode. I've run out of time for recording. However, I am intrigued and we shall continue this in another episode. So thank you for watching. As always, a like is appreciated. And I'll catch you on the next one. Take it easy. Ha <laughs> ha